Good day and welcome to The Rock and we're continuing with our story uh, of the festivals of God and so far we have come all the way from Passover. From Passover we saw the fulfillment and and prophecy of when Jesus was crucified. He was the sacrificial lamb. We then went into the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Jesus was unleavened. Leaven was like sin. Jesus was hidden for three days in the tomb. He was sinless. We then proceeded into the festival of first fruits, which was the first fruits of the harvest. It was fulfilled when Jesus was the first fruits of those who have died and have been resurrected. And he was the first fruit. And because the first fruits of the harvest were accepted, so the whole harvest will be accepted. And we just thank God for that. So those who believe in Christ Jesus will be part of that harvest. 49 days later, and on the 50th day, we have in the Christian, Christian church, we have what's called Pentecost in the uh, Hebrew uh, Bible. It's called Shavuot. The Christian church believed that on that day was the day when the, the Holy Spirit came down and fell upon the disciples. And Peter was able to stand up and preach to thousands of people who were in Jerusalem for the festival of Shavuot. And 3,000 people, the Bible says, were baptized and added to the church on that day. We then moved from there and we came all the way through to what normally is called Rosh Hashanah. The Bible calls it Yom Teruah. Rosh Hashanah, of course, is the, is the start of the Jewish New Year. Not a new year that they would celebrate, but a new year where they have to think about themselves, a self-examination. It's not like we have in the West a new year where we all go out and, and, and celebrate and have feasts and meals and, and whatever, party time. Yom Teruah is the name that the Bible calls it. And Yom is day and Teruah is of the great blast. It's the day of the great blast. So it's also referred to as the festival of trumpets because the trumpet is played a hundred times that day. The shofar is blown and you can hear it echoing all over the the, 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 the country of Israel. After the after that, they believe on that day, This is the Jews believe on that day, that the the books were opened and God has then made a judgment and he's got three books. He's got the book of the righteous, the book of the unrighteous, and in the middle, the book of the don't knows. They haven't made their mind up yet. So in this period of time from leading up to what we are now, which is going to be Yom, uh, Yom Kippur. So from Yom Teruah, which is Rosh Hashanah, to Yom Kippur is 10 days. And they are called the 10 days of awe, awesome days. What the, the, the Jewish people will do on that day, or those 10 days, is they will do self-examination. They will look at themselves, they will examine their lives. If they've got something wrong with, with uh, if there's a disagreement with someone, they will go and try and make that right. Um, if they owe money, they will try and go and pay that debt back. If they can, they will forgive whoever's borrowed them for it. They want to make themselves right with God leading up to Yom Kippur. On Rosh Hashanah, the, the Talmud states in the Midrash that, that the gates of heaven are open. So the people who are in the righteous books are already forgiven. We as Christians believe that this is the time of the rapture when there will be a, separ- a great separation. And the separation will be when the believers are taken to be with the Lord. Biblically speaking, and on the, uh, the Jewish uh, religion, what they believe is that that's the time when there is a separation from the righteous to the unrighteous. And during that period of time, the unrighteous will have to examine themselves and return to the Lord. This is called the period of called teshuva, which means returning or repentance, turning back to God. Then we come up to Yom Kippur. Now, Yom Kippur is the most holiest day of the year for the Hebrew people. This is the day, the only festival where they actually have to fast for a period of 25 hours, one hour longer than a full day. They're told to, the Bible says that they have to afflict themselves from food. Now, afflict themselves, we often get the feeling, well, self-affliction is like self-abuse. What the translation actually means that not uh, afflict themselves with, with fasting. In other words, to stop from all worldly pleasures, stop from 
from the, the eating the foods and, and drinking what you want to drink and concentrate on getting yourself ready for God. It really, the word better translated will be to humble yourselves before God. So that's what they do. That's what the, the Jewish people, even to this day, will do. And back in biblical times, this is what they did. Now, the high priest had to isolate himself for seven days before Yom Kippur. He had to keep away from the other people. He was to be totally ceremonially cleansed um, as opposed to being mixing with the other priests. But he had to read the law, the Torah. He had to read the instructions of God. He had to know exactly the procedure. And the procedure was very, very complicated, which we're not going to get into today. But we are going to look at some of the procedures that do affect us because we want to see prophetically where it's going to be fulfilled. Now, when we look back to Rosh Hashanah, that hasn't been fulfilled yet. The, the, the first four uh, spring festivals have all been fulfilled in, in real life. But the Rosh Hashanah, the Yom Teruah, the day of the blast, the separation from the righteous from the unrighteous has not yet happened. And that's what we're waiting for. And then the, the, we believe that then they go into the days of self-examination, the tribulation, the days of affliction when they get afflicted. And this is called Jacob's trouble or the days of uh, tribulation. And it lasts for seven years. After the seven-year period of tribulation, we then believe that Jesus will return to the Mount of Olives, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4 tells us that he will land with his feet on the Mount of Olives and he will come back again to judge the world. Judging the world is back to Yom Kippur. That's why it's so important um, for us to understand what it means. The priest would, would, the high priest, only the high priest was allowed to do any of the sacrifices that day. He had to do everything. He alone, no other priest could help him. He would then change from his normal, beautiful clothes uh, uh, with, with his breastplate of, of the precious gemstones. He would take all of that off. He would take his, his ephod off. He would take everything that was colorful and bright and shiny and absolutely stunning off that set him apart. And he would lay it down and he'd put on simple linen clothes next to his body. He would put a sash around his head, uh, around his waist and a, a, a turban around his head, and these were white and gold. He would then, on that day, he would then proceed, and he had to do 15 different sacrifices on that day. He had to go backwards and forwards from the, the, the court area of the temple right into the area of, of the, the sanctuary, which is called the holy place, not the holy of holies, but it was the holy place where they kept the menorah and the... Uh, table of showbread and the golden altar of incense 42 times backwards and forwards he had to do that to fulfill all the commandments that were written down in the torah so he had quite a quite a busy day his first time going into the holy of holies which is where the ark of the covenant would have been kept in the first temple and in the in the tabernacle uh, in the in the old testament he would have gone in there uh, first of all, with the blood of a bull. He had to sacrifice a bull for his own sin and for the sins of his family. So he would go in there and he would take the blood of the bull and he had to be cleansed ritually first. And then he would then sprinkle it on the Ark of the Covenant seven times before it and on top of the mercy seat. Mercy seat is called the Kippuret, and that's where we get Kippur from, Yom Kippur, because Kippuret means uh, mercy, it means forgiveness. It's the day of forgiveness. It's a day when God, atonement, or if we break that atonement word up, we can call it at one mint, at one mint with God, being atoned with God and being back in fellowship with him once again. So that bull had to be it had to be sacrificed. He had to bring the blood, and it has to be a, an animal uh, that would be uh, acceptable and clean, clean before the Lord. Because and it had to be an, uh, what they would call an innocent animal. In other words, an animal without blemish. We see this was fulfilled when Jesus was also without blemish, without sin, without fault, and he was sacrificed. He was atoned. First of all, he was atoned for himself and he cleansed everything to do with himself. And this was all done on the cross. After the priest, the high priest back in Yom Kippur, after he had done the, the, the cleansing for himself and for his family, he would then go and get two goats, 
One was called the Azel, and the other one was be the, to be the one that was going to be slaughtered. Lots were cast and to see which goat was going to be the Azel, the scapegoat, uh, and which one would be the one that was going to be sacrificed. The one that was going to be sacrificed would then be sacrificed again by the high priest. He had to do everything. He would sacrifice the, the goat, take the blood, go back into the Holy of Holies, and do the same thing that he did with the blood of the bull. But this time he was doing it for the nation. He would take then, go outside. Once that was done, the people were waiting with bated breath to see if he's going to come out again or if God had, had zapped him while he was in the Holy of Holies. And he came out again, and the people were lying prostrate on the ground, and they were just waiting for him with bated breath that he would come out again. Because this time it was for the sin of the nation. We see this is going to happen when the Bible talks about Israel going to be saved in a day. This is going to be the judgment of Israel. The time of the Gentiles, uh, we believe in prophecy, will have come to an end. We believe it comes to an end in Yom Teruah. And then God will concentrate on the ethnic group of, of, of the Israelites or the Hebrews or today as we would call the Jews. And he will then concentrate on them. They will have that time to, to, to come back to the Lord. And the Bible says that when he does come back, they will look upon the one whom they have pierced, which was Christ Jesus, and they will believe in him and they will be saved. This is all enacted out as a rehearsal. As we said, the rehearsal in the Bible is called a holy convocation, or in Hebrew, the mikra. And when this has taken place, the, the goat, the, the scapegoat, the, the high priest goes out, he lays his hands on the goat, and he will confess the sins of the nation of Israel. He will then ask God to forgive them. So he's, when he puts his hands on the goat, he is imparting the sins. When he's praying on the goat, he's not blessing the goat, he's, he's imparting the sin of the nation symbolically onto this goat. The goat is then led away outside of the temple, outside of the city, right outside the gates of the camp, right into the uh, wilderness area in uh, the second temple period and the first temple, it was over towards the Mount of Olives, and they would take it over to the edge of a sort of a cliff. They would lead it out, and the, it had a red uh, a, a tie around it, its, its, its neck. And according to tradition and according to the Talmud and the Midrash, that that would turn white. And they reckon that the 40 days after Christ, or 40 years after Christ's crucifixion, they carried on doing this, but the, the cord never ever changed from scarlet to white again. And the reason for that, we know, is because Jesus was the last and the ultimate sacrifice for everyone. The high priest had to do absolute everything. Jesus did everything for us. He was our high priest. He is through his blood. It had to be through innocent blood. It was life for life. It was blood for blood. It was his life for our lives. He became our high priest. He became our scapegoat. He became our sacrificial goat. He became our bull. He became all the offerings, everything. Jesus did. He was the one who, was, who came into the, into the Holy of Holies. He was the one who was to be isolated for seven days. He was the one that said to Mary, touch me not for I have not yet ascended to my father. He was the one that took on the mantle of everything that we had to do. The high priest had to go into the place where the, the menorah was. He had to make sure there was just that right amount of oil. Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. The Spirit in the Bible is the, the oil the, 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 the sacrificial oil, the oil that burns in the menorah. He made sure that the, the, the wicks were cleaned. If the wick is not trimmed, then you'll get that the wick, it'll smoke too much. And sometimes we need to be trimmed and we need to be cut back as Christians. Otherwise, sometimes we just are like smoking pieces of, of, of wick that's going up there. Those are trimmed. Those are trimmed back so that they burn. They give the, the, the best kind of light. There are seven candles or seven lamps on the on the menorah but yet of all only one light they all show the one light so there are seven different burning vessels all being led and fed by the center one the center one's called the servant lamp which Christ is. He was the servant. He was the one that came. He was called, uh, the Jewish people believe there are going to be the two messiahs. There's going to be one called Ben Joseph, which means the, the son of, the, of suffering, which we see, read in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53. And the other one is Ben David, which is the conquering king, which we see in Zechariah that's coming through. 
But we know that Christ was both. In the first four festivals, he was the suffering servant. And in the, the last three that's coming up, we've done Rosh Hashanah, we've done Yom Kippur, and the next one next week will be Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. And that is a time of rejoicing. The, at the end of the day of Yom Kippur, when, the, when everything is done, they then have a final service. And on that service, they then ask for the gates of heaven will be closed. And they believe that that's the last time that, that you've got a chance of going because that will be the day of judgment. And that's in prophecy what is expected to happen uh, with Yom Kippur. It's going to be the final day, the day of judgment. Now, just as a little bit of a footnote, in the tabernacle, when they went through the, the veil, there was the Ark of the Covenant. On top of the Ark of the Covenant was the, the, the Kippurah, which is the mercy seat. When they had the temple built and Solomon had the temple uh, constructed, beautiful temple, they went through the veil and in there they had the Ark of the Covenant, exactly the same Ark that was in the tabernacle. When it was destroyed, the Ark of the Covenant disappeared. And they, no one has ever found it since. Where they built the second temple when they came back out of Babylon, they built the second temple. The Jewish people were disappointed because it wasn't as glorious and as splendor, had as much splendor as the Temple of Solomon. But through the years, King Herod then, he added on to it, and he, he really did an amazing a job of architecture with the second temple. The second temple looked stunning. It was fantastic. It had the various courts in it but it did not have the Ark of the Covenant. So when Jesus walked on the earth, the Ark of the Covenant wasn't behind the veil. What was behind the veil was a stone. That stone today can be seen in the Dome of the Rock. It's built on Temple Mount. When you look over, you can down, you see a stone. It's called the foundation stone. So when the, 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 the Roman soldiers came in to plunder and take the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant away, all they could find was the stone, the foundation stone. Paul tells us that Jesus is our foundation, and we know that he is also our rock. So today, the only thing left is that foundation stone. The Jewish people believe, according to the Talmud, that that is the foundation of the earth. That's where the earth started and was, was created. And we don't know, but that's what they believe. So I hope you enjoyed this little bit of, of explanation on Yom Kippur. And until next time, I say, Goodbye and God bless.